Well, we have another piece of garbage graphics card here. We have the NVIDIA GeForce GT 1030. Uh, this is the GDDR5 variant. Uh, Micron. Uh, you're not going to see that name in a few years when the AI bubble bursts and they go out of business. But anyways, that's a story for another day. Uh, we are overclocking it with a 210 megahertz overclock on the core and a 400 megahertz overclock on the memory. It does help a little bit and it is stable. So we're going to leave it like that. Now with that out of the way, here are the rest of the GPU specs if you are interested. Uh, we are running 16 gigs of RAM with an i5-4590 and we are running the latest NVIDIA drivers for this card I believe. I think, I haven't checked it in about a couple weeks but I don't, I don't think NVIDIA is really updating the 10 series anymore so I think this is the latest version. Either way, I don't really think it's going to matter much because it's a 1030. Uh, but yeah, with that out of the way, I guess let's... Uh, Let's start the video, shall we? All right, so starting things off easy, we have Portal 2 running at the 1080p resolution. Ooh, that's not it. There you go, 1080p resolution. Um, it's not windowed mode, as you can see, this is full screen, so I don't know what that's about. Um, we are also running everything cranked all the way up. 8x MSAA, as high as it goes, 16x filtering, no V-Sync, and everything else is cranked. Um, so yeah, I didn't make any changes, thanks. All right. Alright, so, Portal 2. This is a pretty easy to run Source Engine game at this point. Um, as you can see, we're getting 100 plus FPS. Um, my mouse is stuttering, that's nothing to do with the computer, that's just my mouse is dying, I think it needs a new battery, but it doesn't really matter. Um, as you can see, the, uh, the GPU is... I, oh, did not mean to walk into that. <laughs> um, as you can see, the little 1030 is handling Portal 2 perfectly fine. Um, I mean, I guess it's to be expected. Portal 2 is pretty easy to run. I mean, if, if this thing can't run Portal 2 maxed out, like, uh, you know, it wouldn't be a good sign. But uh, it's running Portal 2 perfectly fine. If we look through the portals, which can be a little intensive, it's actually higher frames. Interesting. A lot of the times when I look through a portal, the FPS drops, but instead it actually goes up. Mm, interesting. Um, wow, this mouse is really starting to piss me off. Um, so yeah, Portal 2, perfectly playable. Let's try a little bit more demanding of a Source Engine game. Alright, so here we are in Black Mesa. If you don't know what Black Mesa is, it is basically a Half-Life 1 remake on the more modern Source Engine with better graphics and all that crap. Uh, anyways, we're running at 1080p resolution, full screen obviously, uh, we're going to turn off this, we're going to turn off that, we're going to turn off that. Um, overall, everything seems to have defaulted to mostly high settings, yep, everything's pretty much at high. Um, I don't know why it says custom, but, oh, it's because I changed it, but it doesn't matter. Uh, anyways, mostly high settings, 1080p resolution. Again, this is Source Engine, um, as you can see. We are getting below 60 frames in certain instances. Um, this is one of my favorite areas to try for the uh, Black Mesa benchmark, M mainly because it is a very intensive area with all of these fire and explosion effects going on. Um, so yeah, this makes for a pretty decent benchmark in my opinion. I, I don't know, I, I kind of forgot how to open this door, I'll be honest with you, but uh, either way... Oh, I gotta wait for this guy. Thanks. Alright, so in here we tend to have a lot of explosions like that, which... Um, definitely... Definitely affect the frame rate a bit. Okay. Um, honestly, it did it did slightly better than I was expecting. I was expecting it to dip a little bit more. Um, but then again, it is Source Engine, so, I mean, it pretty much runs on everything. Uh, any, anything made after 2010, it, it'll basically run on, so... Uh, yeah, I guess it shouldn't be too surprising, but... Overall, I mean, I'm, I'm so far not that disappointed in, in a little 1030. Like, it's, it's performing a bit better than I was expecting. So, enough with the Source Engine games, why don't we try something, I don't know, maybe something a bit more demanding, like War Thunder maybe? Well, here we have War Thunder running in the 1080p resolution using the low settings quality preset. This is what the game automatically recommended to achieve 60 plus FPS. 
Um, bad news is it's failing to do that in the menu. Good news is we're not in the game yet, so who knows how it's going to be in game and we're going to find out right now because it's loading. And while we're loading in, let me take a second to uh, just point out the fact that for some reason this game is just absolutely eating up this processor. Like <laughs> this, this game has no business eating up a uh, i5 4590 like this. So I don't know, I don't know what the deal is with that, but uh, we're just gonna we're not gonna play too much War Thunder. Um, just enough to get an idea of what the performance is like with this GPU and these settings. And my mouse died, so I guess we're not gonna be. Oh, oh, it's kind of working. All right. Well, either way, this is 1080p low settings on War Thunder. Um, we we appear to be hammer, hammering both the CPU and the GPU pretty equally. The, the GPU seems to be maxed out pretty much all the time, and the CPU is frequently hitting maximum as well. Which I don't know what that's about, to be honest with you. Um, but. It does not appear like the GPU utilization is dropping at all, once the CPU usage does kind of sit around, oh my. Anyways, um, yeah, I don't know, I don't know what that's about. Oh, I got a kill, look at that, that's how you know it's a good benchmark, when I get the first shot I fire is a kill. That, that's how you know, that's how you know this is a good GPU. Like, the GT 1030, it's the winning GPU for this game. Uh, one thing I will say, uh, well, I'm dead now. Um, one thing I will say is the frames are dropping into the 60s and even 50s a little bit, so I guess the low settings quality preset is kind of uh, a good pick. Uh, for the most part, it is staying above 60 frames a second. I mean, obviously it's going to drop once in a while, but uh, if you want to play War Thunder on a GT 1030, you absolutely can. Um, just don't expect to push it much higher than the low settings because, well, it's not a very powerful card. And just remember, this card is also overclocked with a pretty decent overclock with about 200 on the core and I think it was about 400 on the memory. So I might be able to push it even farther if I really wanted to, but for now, this is good enough. I don't know how that missed. But anyways, that's the end of the benchmark and let's move on to maybe, maybe some Counter-Strike 2. Let's see how this thing runs Counter-Strike 2. Okay, so here we are in Counter-Strike 2. This is 1080p low settings with quality FSR. So I believe that is 720p or around 720p in terms of actual render resolution. So it's not great, but the performance is decent enough, I guess. I mean, is it, play Ooh. Is it playable? Yeah, I'd say Counter-Strike is pretty playable. Uh, looks like we're sitting at about uh, 80 to 100 frames per second. Um, actually, funnily enough, oh wait, never mind. I was gonna say, funnily enough, it looks like the GPU utilization is not maxed out, which typically can indicate a CPU bottleneck. But the VRAM usage, this this mouse is actually a piece of shit. Like, I, I actually just want to like throw it out and buy a new one. Like, this is, I mean, yeah, it just, it just stops working like that. Like, I can't really, I don't know what the, I don't know what the fuck you want me to do game. Like, I, I can't, I can't play this. Like, can I turn up the sensitivity? Like, this is, uh, hmm. well, mouse sensitivity. Yep, we're going to turn that way up, and oh my, that is a lot of mouse sensitivity now. I promise I will I will get at least one kill and this and this mouse just keeps oh, you're just asking to get the sledgehammer treatment. Oh sorry, the one grip. Hashtag dank pods reference, you know, the one grip. Anyways, um Yeah, Counter Strike 2 is definitely playable on the GT ten thirty. Um, but I would not call it a great experience by any means. It is definitely not an amazing experience considering uh, we're just barely above 60 frames in certain instances and we're dropping into the 70s or even 60s at some points. Um, like, yeah, like that's actually ridiculous. <laughs> that, that mouse choppiness. 
and just uh, we're not going to talk about how there's also about half a second of input lag i don't know if oh hi no maybe not quite half a second but there's definitely a little bit of input lag i don't know if that is from the gpu or if that's from my mouse that's just a piece of shit i don't really know because i could say oh but does it happen on other on other games well it's hard to say because well not every game has the performance issues not performance issues the mouse issues is this actually no it's not even the games it's just random times when i'm using this mouse it just doesn't so it's kind of hard to say if it's the game or the mouse but i'd be more inclined to blame it on on the mouse than the game because well i mean this, this mouse is just giving me issues i guess so i mean either way counter-strike 2 i'd say is actually surprisingly playable for a 1030 i'm not gonna lie um although i, I do kind of wish it was a little better i mean granted it's a 1030 yeah it's it wasn't good when it came out like however many years ago it's been i don't even i don't even know it's been a while <laughs> um but still, I mean, Counter-Strike 2 is not a graphically impressive game by any means. So, like, I don't know. I feel like it just should be performing a little better. But part of it is definitely down to the lack of VRAM. Um, because there are plenty of instances that GPU usage is not really, you know, maxing out. And I highly doubt it's a CPU bottleneck. I mean, actually, well, I mean, it could be a CPU bottleneck. Because we are sitting in the 70s to 80s, or if not 90s, in terms of CPU usage. Um, although, the VRAM usage is also fully maxed out, so it could also be a VRAM limitation. Either way, if you paired this with a better processor, I don't think you'd be seeing much, if any, of an improvement in terms of performance. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely... It's playable. Would I recommend it? No. Why am I spending the most time on Counter-Strike 2? Because I'm actually having a bit of fun. Um, so yeah. I don't know how five heads doesn't kill him. This game is fucking stupid. So yeah, that's where I'm going to end it. We're going to move on to Subnautica last. And then we're going to call it quits. Alright, lastly we have Subnautica. Why am I testing this game over anything else? Well, it takes up very little storage. It looks relatively good. And it's pretty well optimized. So... Uh, yeah, that's kind of why I chose this game over anything else. Anyways, we're going to start off by turning off motion blur, because motion blur is atrocious. We're going to turn off that, that, um, also that. I don't really like Bloom, to be honest with you. I mean, actually, it, yeah, it does slightly hamper the performance. I'm actually going to leave it on. Anyways, everything else is set to uh, the highest, basically, or high settings. But So, yeah, let's... Uh, Let's get into Subnautica, shall we? All right, so we have loaded into Subnautica. We are, oof. Hmm, that's not great frames. Uh, although we are running out of VRAM, as you can see based on the Steam overlay right there. The VRAM is maxed out at two gigs. Uh, so just to be safe, what we're gonna actually do is we're gonna go to, Let's see, okay, we're not going to do that. I was going to say we're going to turn down textures, but for some reason, textures doesn't e it doesn't exist in this game. That setting is just not a thing. Um, well, I guess we won't be turning down the textures because that's not an option. Uh, so I guess instead we're going to turn this down to medium. Terrain... Okay, well, I'm not going to restart the game, so whatever, I don't, I don't care. Uh, either way, this is Subnautica, medium settings now. Uh, we're getting mid to upper 30s, um, so yeah, the, oh, the VRAM usage is actually down below 2 gigs now, so fuck you, I'm not going to restart the game. It's, it did exactly what I wanted, dropped the VRAM usage. Uh, yeah, we are fully GPU bound, CPU is... Uh, not really doing much at about 40%. RAM usage is also not very high. I don't know why I'm looking at the RAM usage. It's not really relevant with this game and this amount of RAM. Uh, performance wise, we are um, not horrible. I'd say this is, again, slightly better than. Wow, that was really deep. Um, 
performance wise it's kind of in line with what I was expecting honestly I wasn't wasn't really expecting anything crazy in terms of performance and uh, whatnot but oh did I speak too soon I might have spoke too soon the game just uh oh uh oh I might have spoke too soon about the game running good uh oh um hmm well I guess that cuts the Subnautica benchmark off pretty early. Uh, I was going to say the game was running great. It was running decently fine uh, until it wasn't. So that was a thing. Uh, yeah, I kind of think it might be part of the overclock, but nothing else has had issues game-wise, so I don't really think it's the overclock. But either way, that brings me to the end of the video. I can't be bothered to uh, test it again, so we're just going to uninstall it and you know get my 6 or so gigabytes back. Um, so overall, would I really recommend the GT 1030 and what do I think of the GT 1030 in 2025, almost 2026? Well, it's perfectly fine for display adapter use, kind of like what it was designed and made to do is be a display adapter and that's about it. Um, it's fine for that. Uh, when it comes to gaming, well, it can game kind of, uh, Obviously, it has to be older games. Nothing, nothing really modern is really going to run on this with only two gigs of VRAM. Uh, it's not very powerful. You know, low CUDA core, CUDA core, mm, CUDA core count. Wow, that's a tongue twister. Say that three times fast. Whatever. Um, so yeah, not a great card by today's standards. Wasn't a great card when it came out. So yeah, good for older games. Good for less intensive games, but. Really, anything past, honestly, anything past really the release date of this card, you're not going to be really running it with high settings. So, yeah, that brings me to the end of the video. If you liked it, feel free to please subscribe, like, and share the video, and comment any suggestions, ideas, or whatever, thoughts, opinions, whatever you want. Comment them down below. I read all the comments. So, yeah, uh, until next time. See you later, and have a good holiday.